All right, so here we are with our text or our UV laid out fish. <clears throat> um, and then we need to start painting the texture on them. So what I've done is I've opened up Mari. And it's always good when you get into a new program to, to kind of explore the interface um, before you actually start doing like a whole bunch of work. So when you first start this program, you're going to get this. And you won't have all of this. These are all the ones that you know I have in my list uh, of things. Um, so what you're going to do is hit new. And then here you're going to call this whatever you want to call it. And so for me, it's going to be fish texturing. And then the path to the geometry. Now we haven't exported the geometry or anything uh, out of there yet. So I'm going to hit this up arrow. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And the drive here, 2540, work, fish, scenes. And that's where my original fish file is. Now if I look down here, file of type, ABC, OBJ, or PTX, these are the kinds of files that it wants me to have, okay, that allows me to bring in. So in Maya, I have to export my fish out as an OBJ. Before I do that, I just want to double check my UVs. So I always go to the UVs first, turn my image off, and then I just verify that everything still is within that top right quadrant um, also, that I don't have any overlapping things. They can be close, uh, but I don't want any overlapping. <clears throat> okay. Um, everything's still uniform and square. Perfect. Let's do this. So, uh, I'm going to export it as an OBJ. So, I'm going to go to just save scene as and look for OBJ. If it doesn't show up in this list, oops, not, sorry, not save as, export. There we go, selection. Um, if it doesn't show up in this list, which I don't see it in here. Um, then we have to go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager. And under the OBJ export, right there, I have to turn that on. So now I can export it as an OBJ. There it is. Uh, fish exported. Okay, so what this is going to do is export this out as an OBJ file, uh, which is different than a Maya file. Um, basically, it's something that can be read in several different programs. So inside here, you'll see now it shows up. It says zero bytes, but it'll be bigger uh, once it reloads it. There we go. So now there's my fish. <clears throat> For the mapping scheme, we're just going to tell it to use the UVs. Okay, um, if we didn't have UVs, we could say force PTEX, and we'd have to figure out what you know, that's going to give us after. Um, right now we just have one geometry, so we're just going to say merge geometries, geometries into one. Um, and then from our root path, we want to pick our um, folder where we're saving all of our stuff to. So again, desktop, D drive. And I'm just going to drop this into source images. Okay, that way it'll put all my images into the source images because that's my texture root path. <clears throat> For this, we're going to be creating a color map. So I'm going to say create color map. And we'll do this at a 4,000 by 4,000 uh, resolution. Um, it's always good to go higher than we need because we can always lower it. Once you start down here, you can't make it bigger as you paint. Um, here's the base fill color, which is just nothing right now. So I'll just leave it there. And everything else should be good. Okay. So it's going to import our file and create the um, setup stuff. Wait a second. All right. So here's our startup. All right. So now the way that Mari works is we have the same controls as we do inside Maya as far as um, navigation, moving things, rotating things, whatever. This is an orthographic view, so if I were to paint in here, it's painting orthographically, meaning that there's no deformation based on um, camera perspective or any of that business. Um, if we go to perspective view, this will actually add a little bit of distortion to it, which could distort the texture. So just be aware of that. I like to paint in ortho and then switch to perspective just to kind of see how things are looking uh, if ortho is not giving me what I need. There's also an ortho and UV, so I can see the orthographic view here, and the UVs there. Um, for what I do, I typically don't need that. Um, sometimes I will jump to the UV mode if I'm trying to paint something very specific on here. 
Um, like if I wanted a tattoo on my fish or, you know, a specific scale cut or something, I could paint it right there on the fin, all right? You could do it out here too, but sometimes it's easier to get it nice and even if you're in the other area. Here's your projects. So this is back to this window. And then uh, forums, which is where you can go and talk about that stuff. All right. <clears throat> um, so that's what that is. Now, you may not have this objects window up. We only have one object in the scene, so it's not really going to be terribly important because we only have one object. I can just close that palette. Um, the other area we're going to be playing with is this side here. So over here, uh, we have my channels. And I don't know if it's doing it in the video, but my mouth, my my mouse is flickering over all these menus. It's weird. Um, this is my color channel, so we're painting color on here, so that's my color channel. I could add other channels uh, if I needed to, or subtract channels, or convert channels. Um, here's if I needed just a quick channel. Okay, we don't need to worry about that right now. Um, the image manager is where we're going to be bring, where we'll bring images into. So when we want to, bring, want to bring a fish texture, we'll bring it into there. Uh, here's the shader. Don't need to worry about that too much right now. Um, and here's the shelf. Okay. So typically in this, you'll deal with the image manager and the shelf. And the shelf is where all your brushes are. You know, what kind of brush are you painting onto the fish? And I've downloaded some brushes that are kind of scratch brushes. Here's Brad's brushes. Okay. These are just um, the same thing as Photoshop files. You can just download brushes and use them. And it creates a really cool way, here's a, a fingerprint brush, um, to add stuff into your scene as opposed to just having a round brush. Alright, so we'll be playing with Shelf and Image Manager. Um, and then we'll be going down to the projection. Now as we paint on here, uh, I'm just going to paint something right here. I must have a bad color. But let's see. I'm going to click over here. Nope, I have red. Let's verify I'm on my color layer. Into that why it's not let me paint. No, I probably I know what it is. There we go. I was set on a different mode, so your default mode is not the same as mine. Uh, so I swapped this to um, the selection type is object, and then I just click the object, and then I can paint on it. Okay. So then as I paint this and I get close to the edges here, what's happening is it's um, projecting this texture onto the fish. So as I spin around, we'll probably see um, just like a weird seam or we might see some streaking or whatever, okay? Um, because basically it's not painting on a 3D object, it's projecting it onto the 3D object. So it's just something to be aware of for that. Now in this toolbox here we want to set up a couple things um, I want to preview my mask so I'm gonna say masking preview enabled and you'll see in my case I get some other stuff uh, on here that you'll probably get um, there we go I had a fractal noise mask on him so I'll turn that off and then I also have this edge mask and my edge mask is set to the fall off start at 0.744 and the fall off end at 0.001 as I pull this down you'll see that the red goes away from the edges. Okay. Now we want the red to have a nice little effect like that on there. So what that's going to do is it's going to um, soften the edges so that as I paint and I get to that edge, you know, let me disable the mask for a second so we can see it. There we go. It'll soften the transition into that. So it won't be such a hard transition right there. It's still hard because of where I was painting, uh, but it's not terribly bad right now. So I can paint right on top of that. Okay. Um, so that's what that, that edge mode is going to allow us to do. Okay. Um, we can obviously adjust that so that we're painting 
less or more of the edge, <clears throat> we can adjust where it starts. Okay, so that now as I paint here, I'm not painting any of the red areas because the red is facing away from the camera. So this is only painting stuff that's facing directly at the camera and a little bit more. So now as I spin around, you'll see that it didn't paint in that area, but it didn't leave a terribly hard edge. You can see there is a little bit of transition happening there. Okay, and with this, it's going to be a delicate situation where we have to just be uh, very careful with how we're painting our stuff. All right, so we can adjust these numbers here. Um, these things on the right is how we turn this on and off. So if we didn't want it on or didn't want it off. Uh, projecting on, um, typically this is set to all um, for one object, because we only have one object here. Uh, but if we only had selected only, um, then we would just paint on the selected object. Like we had five objects in here, or each individual piece of the fish was different, then we could do that. Um, also projection, is set to front. Um, we can set it to through, and as I paint here, and spin around, spin around, you'll see that it painted through to the other side. So for something like the fish, it might be a good idea to do a paint through. Um, that way we're painting both sides at the same time. Um, this baking, uh, as I paint like this, you might see a little lag when I hit the Alt key at my, my uh, uh, sand, we call hourglass, there we go. Our hourglass comes up and the hourglass is actually putting the texture in there. If I go and just paint this, this hasn't actually been painted onto the surface yet until I hit alt. Okay, that's what auto bake does. Now I could do manual and do it manually, uh, but auto bake and clear is typically like a good way to, to do it. Okay. All right, there's other kinds of masks inside here too, and as you explore Mari, you'll start to play with those as well. Under painting, um, and these two, like the projection and the painting, typically you just set these things up once and you're good to go, okay? So the next thing I need to set up is my paint buffer. So my texture up here is a 4,000 by 4,000 texture. So I need to make sure that my buffer size is at least 4,000 by 4,000, okay? If this is different, if this is 256, then I can paint all day long and the most it's going to paint is a 256 image, but it's going to project it onto a 4K image, which doesn't really look very good. So 4K by 4K, or you could even go higher in this one, 8K, just to maintain that uh, stuff. Okay, Marty's going to close now because I didn't like that. All right, so I just <clears throat> reopened Mari, and found my file, and then uh, I'm just going to leave it at 4K because my video card apparently cannot handle an 8K image. <clears throat> um, all right, so that should be good. So we don't need to play with this painting area anymore. Um, the projection area, typically, I'll use it just to turn the mask on. And come on, a little bit over. Disable certain masks that I don't need. Or turn on masks that I do need. Okay, um, like we said, I want this to be all, I want this to be through. Okay, now if I, there is a certain instance where I don't want this, I'll come back to projection, but typically I, I'm all set. Okay, I've turned my edge mask on, I've adjusted it so the edges are a bit soft. I've set this to through, I've set that to all. <clears throat> so that's pretty good. Um, I'll go to layers and, and do the rest of my work there. Okay, there is colors here. Um, the colors for this is right here and then right there. It's kind of hard to get to. So sometimes you'll see me switch to this color tab to change the color that I'm, that I'm painting with. Okay. Just because there it's kind of tricky to get to. Um, okay. So that's pretty much it. We'll be working with a couple brushes here. The um, paint brush tool barely will use that. Uh, most of the time I'll use this paint through canvas. Um, Paint through images onto canvas brush. All right, so now before we start painting, we definitely want to look at the surface and see if we're liking what we're getting. <clears throat> we can't paint stuff that's not there. So if you see this edge here is very blocky, when I come back into Maya, it looks like it's smooth, but I think it's just the preview. If I hit three, there you go, look at how smooth that is, right? Uh, it's not gonna paint the smoothed out version. All right, it's only gonna paint that version. So if you really wanted to get a nice smooth out version of this, 
You may want to smooth it first, export the OBJ, bring it into Mari, and then paint that. I'm fine with painting this because I know it's just going to be smoothed out afterwards. Um, and it's not going to be like we're that close to it. We're going to be a bit further away from these fish, so it's not going to be a huge deal. Okay. Uh, also, all of our hotkeys are right here in this window. Click my objects. Uh, it says tool help, radius, uh, rotate, opacity, and squish. Okay, so just be on the lookout for that stuff. Um, brush controls are up here. Color, alpha, radius, flow, radius, opacity, and flow. So there's more stuff up there. You can use a tablet with this. There's a bunch of menus. Don't need to worry about most of them. For what we're doing, we're keeping it very simple. Um, so we need textures. I need to texture my fish. So I go to CG textures and I find a good fish texture. This is not a good fish texture because it's kind of murky, number one. Um, and number two, I look at this fish and see more of a fin fish as opposed to something like this, which is more of a skin, I believe. Um, same thing kind of here. I don't really see the fins. Now I see the fins on this guy but I do see a highlight, okay? So we're gonna go into Photoshop and erase that highlight so we can use this texture. Something like this, that's a dead fish. You don't want that, you wouldn't be swimming. Something like this, a big highlight on the top, might be a little bit harder to get rid of that, okay? Um, you want to find something with some nice coloration. Um, here's a good one as far as, you know, being close to it, uh, but there's really not enough detail there to be able to use as a texture. Okay, something like that, if you have this specific fish, you could use that texture. Uh, but again, we just have to be on the lookout. This is good for getting these kinds of things here, even if we adjusted the color. Okay, same thing there. Um, oops. Okay, now some of these, like I said, the highlight's going across, but maybe I could use this fin and these fins here and adjust stuff. Okay, so let me grab a couple of these. So um, first I'm going to log in. Then I'm going to go to my fish. And I click down this fish. You get a lot of fossil fish when you uh, type that. Alright, so I'm going to grab... Um, I don't think I'm going to grab anything from him. This guy, I think I'm going to grab his stuff. Okay. Uh, go with the large. You always want the largest one. Just save that. Because uh, we are going to be painting it. We want to make sure we have a big enough one to paint. We had a prana. That's a pretty good prana texture right there. I'll grab this one too. Remember, you have 15 or 16 megabytes uh, limit. My membership is expired too. That's a good close-up of a texture for the fins. Alright. There's the other one that I saw. Same color as the first one? No. More orange. Okay, now you can adjust colors too, so don't think that just because I grabbed an orange fish that I'm stuck with an orange fish. All right, I think that should probably be good to start off with. So I'm going to go into Photoshop. And... Opening up those three fish images. Okay, so let's hide our guides here. The first thing I want to do is get rid of the highlighting right here. Okay, so this isn't a terribly difficult thing to do. I'm just going to use the clone stamp tool and I'm going to paint onto a new layer. So I made a new layer. And where it says sample, I'm going to make sure it says all layers. Okay, so I'm going to hold down Alt click on my source area and then move up and then I'm just painting now across this now, my flow is set really low down which is typically fine um, but for this I really just want to be a little bit more aggressive and taking that out there we go 
Okay. Now the reason we don't want to have that highlight is because that highlight would be on every fish all the time. If I'm going to light my own fish, um, then I want my own highlights to be there. All right. So then what I can do is I can play with these modes too, and sometimes you'll get a nice little blend of it. Um, sometimes your there you go. Like this is the original, basically. Um, your uh, stamping will be a little bit too flat looking. And so sometimes you want to adjust it uh, to blend it in a little bit more. And I think actually the normal was fine. We do lose a little bit of, of shape to it. Um, but like I said, we're not going to be very close. We're putting it on a 3D object. Oops. I am getting it a little bit softer than I would like. Okay, just be aware of that too, that you don't want to soften the texture. See, I'm softening it. I'm losing like the detail of the scales. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. There we go. All right, so that's good. So I'm going to save that out. I'm going to put that... And I'll just call this fish uh, scales. Okay, I don't need layers. Uh, I'm going to save it as a tiff. Wonderful. Okie dokie. Alright, so that one's good. Nope, still saving. Now I didn't save the layers on this because I still have the original. I could just get it back if I needed to. Alright, now I like the fins on this guy here. <clears throat> uh, there is a little bit of a highlighting going on, so I can go into this. Oops. with my clone stamp and I could sample from these areas here and just paint out some of that okay now the time you spend building these textures into nice textures will definitely come into play when you get into uh, back into 3d back into Maya because it'll just make everything look a lot uh, better okay and there are people who their job is just to go through and build textures just to like clean things up like okay we're build, doing a fish movie we're going to need so many textures of fish and so they'll go out and they'll create all of these textures that they can use in the movie and some of them get used and some of them don't and in some studios it's just the guy making the texture goes out and does it Okay, so um, you just want to be as diverse as possible because you never know where you're going to end up and what you want to do. All right, so that's good enough. Um, okay, cool. I'm not going to use the, the scales from this one. I'm just using the fins here and here and there. So I'm just going to... Um, Reopen that first fish that we had. I think it was 30. It was not 30. Oops, let's close 30. 30. It was 32. There he is. Okay. Now, this is the original, not the edited one. So, what I want to do is I'm looking at these fins, and I could just grab this. Okay, I'm just going to copy this fish into here. And I just want to see how this and that would look together, okay? <clears throat> so what I think I want to do is I'm going to go to uh, Image, Adjustments, Match Color, and I'm going to say I want to match um, oops, this image. I'm in 31, and I want to match Layer 1, okay? Now I'm on Layer 1, so... Let's go to background. There we go. Adjustments, match color. There we go. So now I'm going to say match 31, layer 1. And what it should do is it should adjust the coloring of that one. Okay. So if I hit OK and I turn this off, you can now see how the colors are matching that a bit better. If I just undo that, you can see how it changes the coloration of it. So those fins, it may not be a perfect fit, 
uh, but they should fit a little bit better maybe okay and then I can always adjust it from there so let me click on this and go to adjustments color balance and I'll pull a little bit of the red out of it and add a little bit of yellow let's go to our shadows too and pull some of the There we go. So that kind of fixes a little bit of it. Um, I could also go to adjustments, hue and saturation, and just slide the hue around until I get to something a little bit more orange is what I'm looking for. Yeah, I won't play with that too much. Okay, I could also colorize it, but then I lose like all color value. All right, so I'm going to stay with that. Okay, so hide that. We'll save this. And this will be fish fins. Uh, no layers. Save it. Yes. Still saving. Cool. All right, so we have that guy. Good. And then this one, too, I could use these fins also. And these ones actually look like they maybe match his color a little bit better. Uh, fish fins, too. As a tip, okay. I'll just bring them both in, and I can play with both of them, both of those if I need to. All right. So back to Mari. All right. So now we're ready to actually paint this guy. So I'm going to go to my image manager, and I'm going to bring in some images. So there's my import button. Go to my uh, desktop. D drive this. Turn it by 40. Work. Fish. Source images. Here we go. So here's fish fins, fish fins two, and fish scales. Okay, and I'm gonna hit open, and I'll bring in three different images. So the first one I want to paint is my fish scales. So I'll bring my fish scales in, and I literally just drop it right onto the canvas. Uh, it might be hard to see um, these hotkeys here. Um, you can see where it says radius, rotate, opacity, squish. These are all for my brush and then scale image, move image, rotate, stamp, stamp, start, repeat, change alpha. That's for my image. So control shift, I can scale the image down. Okay, now my fish is going from left to right, so I want to paint uh, left to right. So I'm gonna rotate this guy around, all right? Now under camera up here, I can do a camera left and you can see that it automatically puts me in that one, camera right, automatically puts me there. That was lined up okay. It looked like it was off, camera right. All right, and I can bring this a little bit bigger. I can uh, rotate images control, so I can hold control and rotate the image. If I use the plus and minus keys, oops, sorry, shift plus and minus, um, I can change the alpha preview on my fish. This isn't controlling the opacity of the fish, it's just controlling the um, size of it. Um, so, or the um, visibility of it. So let's go to control shift, make this a bit bigger. Okay, we're not gonna be able to get it all in one. It, our goal is just to kind of get a good uh, placement of it. Okay. There we go, so let's start there. So I'm just going to make my brush bigger by going to R, make this bigger. And I'm also gonna to go to my shelf and I'm gonna pick um, I'm gonna pick this spec brush, okay? Because it will give me is just like like patchier stuff. Okay, so it's not gonna be fully uniform. Uh, maybe not for that. I want something that's softer. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this stormy brush. You can use whatever brush. Um, even the basic brushes you can still use and they'll work, but what I just don't like about them is sometimes we get a little bit too soft. Okay, and then it doesn't look you know, as nice. So essentially what we need to do is just kind of paint on there. Okay, so once we have our brush in here, then we're simply just painting on top of our image. 
and you can see how this goes on and I don't even care that I've painted it in areas that I shouldn't have painted it on because um, I'm just going to overwrite those anyway all right so now that I've done my first pass of this then I can start to adjust it so I'm going to hold down alt it's going to bright my image out there we go and I can spin around and I know from the top that um, it's not going to be lined up perfect okay if I look right here, I'm not zooming in. You don't want to zoom in. Once you get your kind of position set, you don't want to zoom in because it'll change the um, size of the texture. Uh, so you can see right here, I'll even turn my projection uh, preview off here. You can see where it's kind of off, okay, where I don't really have anything. So that's fine. So I'm just going to come in here and just paint on there. Now, I don't want a big brush. I hold R, I shrink it down. I'm just painting right there okay now you'll see again that I'm off my black line is now here so I hit undo I move this over until my line is lined up hit undo again and it takes some time to get used to um, uh, getting this in the right position but it's definitely worth it once you do Okay. Now we don't have to get it again perfect um, because of where our fish is going to be at, but we do want to spend some time to get it, you know, nicely looking, nice looking. Now remember, you can change your opacity too, so we don't have to change to paint at a full opacity. Right now, I am um, just to kind of make it a little more obvious, uh, but we can lower our opacity as well. So back here, let me just move my guy down further. No, okay. O, drag my opacity down. And now I'm just painting right on top of that area. All right. So now let's spin around. Okay, then we can do the underside also. Now, the lighting inside of this is um, kind of wonky. So if I go to uh, view tools, okay. there's a view palettes somewhere. There's a lights palette. And on the lights palette, I can click on one of these lights and change where that light is happening. So I'm just spinning this around until I get the bottom a little bit more lit. There we go. So now I can actually see the bottom. And then again, I can go through and just paint these areas that didn't get something. Now I'm painting an eye in the bottom, but I'll just erase that after. Okay. Now we are painting through, so I may want to go to my projection and say just paint oops, the front. Now the bottom's not going to be as big of a deal because you're not really going to see it too much. Okay, and sometimes you want to look at it from this angle. Maybe rotate your image. Put the image over here. Like that. Since we lost some stripes there, we can fix that. That's no big deal. Now again, I'm not zooming in and out, I'm just moving and rotating. Moving and rotating is perfectly fine. So when we get into zooming, that we start to lose the consistency of our texture. Okay, you can move the image, you can move the texture. There we 
to go. Now I've also painted a fin right on him. So again, I want to rotate the texture around. Move this right there. And so now I'm just painting that out. Oops, I want the fish to be actually going the other way. Uh, I can do control shift to scale the image and I can scale it that way. Um, I can also go here. Um, so that's the fish. <clears throat> I'm just going to go back to that side view that I had before under my cameras. Quick camera right. Now, I did zoom it in. I'm just going to pop it back to where it was. Okay, and then I paint through. And I'm going to move my fish image so he's about there, and then I can brush that fin off of it. Okay, so you can see this isn't a, a one, two, three process. This is just like Photoshop where you have to constantly go back and tweak things. And just for now, I'm just going to get rid of basically the face. Get a black stripe there. And you'll see how it's not going to be a. Um, it's not going to be something that needs to be 100% accurate in this instance, okay? Uh, because we're just going to um, have so many of these things, there's going to be just so much other details in the scene. All right, so now I'm just looking at the fin work on this. And the bottom here, I just want to add a little bit more uh, detail to that. Okay, just in those, some of those areas where we probably lost some of our texture. Spin. Paint that fin out a little bit more. There we go. And okay, that should do it. All right, let's spin around. All right, that's good. Okay, so top looks good, bottom looks good. Maybe a little spot there, but that's fine. I can paint a tiny bit. And here's where we want to paint front because it's just in that area right in there. spin around. All right, good. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my quick right, camera right, and then zoom up, and shrink my image down a touch, and I'm going to paint that head onto the fish. Okay, so this will be a through because I'm painting both sides at the same time. Hit undo because I just want to get this in there. There we go. So now I have the eye in the fish. I have this. Cool. Now I think too I'm going to try to pick up some of the fins from him. Uh, Touch. See, his fin is split here, but his fin is obviously not split as much. So that's where it's just a little bit different. Okay, but obviously I could just go like this. Oops, can't get too much of the white in there. Oops. 
Oops, I hit the wrong button. Switch back to that. Uh, some hotkeys, one, two, three, four, is your brushes all the way up to six. Yeah. Um, so, or the views, not the brushes. So if I hit shift, if I hit one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can see how I'm rotating between my different views of the fish. Okay. So just be um, aware of that so it's easier than going up here to the camera view. Alright, so let me rotate my image to there. Put this out here. There we go. I'm going to shrink my brush down. There's so many hotkeys, it's kind of difficult to stay on which program you're in. There we go, that's good. And then I'm going to rotate my fish the other way. Put that up there like this. And then paint that one. A little bit too much in the red area there, or in the white. Okay, that's good. I'm going to rotate it again. Move it down here. I'm going to make it slightly bigger, just so I can fill this area. There we go. All right, so now I have his tail. Uh, painted. Now let's say I wanted one of these other ones. I just drag it down and that swaps the image out. And then I can just rotate it into position. I can even scale it. So scaling it this way scales up the whole thing right in the middle. But if I go to the edge, it'll squish it. Okay, sometimes you can squish it to kind of fit it into a better spot. Because I want to have you know all of that texture right there. And you just got to be careful with that, that you don't um, deform it, and it looks weird. All right, so something like that. Okay, I'm getting some white, but that's fine, because I'm just going to hold Alt to adjust that. And scoot this down. And then paint that, oops, paint this side in. There we go. I can stretch it back out this way to get this bottom fin. Rotate it around for this. Now, if this is looking a little bit too yellowy, I can always paint some little orange bits on afterwards. Okay. Um, I am not liking this transition up here where the fin is at. I'm going to go here and just paint a little bit more. Oops, I'm all the way there, right to there. Okay, I'm going to shift this over and maybe down. Let me just touch that area there. Just blend it in. There we go. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Let's go down here to that fin. Now let's see if one of our images have a better view of that fin there. Uh, not everyone has a pretty horrible image of that fin. But if you look at the color of this fin, it kind of looks like the color of that fin. So, now I'm going to get closer on this one because uh, I'll be very careful with it. I am going to go to my projection 
I'm going to turn my regular brush on for now. Preview enabled. <clears throat> and actually, let me go to my UVs. Because those pieces are probably laid out somewhere. Okay. This is where the UVs are really, really helpful is that if we're looking here at these specific parts, let's say that I go in with my color and I pick this crazy purple. I'm going to turn off my um, mask here. Oops, I scoot it over a touch. There we go. And I'm just going to paint this purple color right on here. Okay, so now if I hit Alt, so it bakes it, and then I go to my UVs, there they are, okay? And all of these are pieces of that specific one. Okay, so one might be the top, one might be the back, one might be the whatever, okay? So what I can do inside here is I could say uh, select mode to face. And oops, if I go to my selection, uh, there's this select items and then this is marquee select okay so if you wanted to select items you could click thinking there we go um, and it would grab the faces that are here okay and I'm just shift clicking those faces I can zoom in pretty close here Oops. now there these are faces it's selecting so uh, we can't really like select less faces. All right, now we could also do that here. We can grab the faces in the here. Oops, that. And then hold shift. Grab those. All right. And I can do the same thing on the other side. Hold shift. Grab all those faces there. I want these. Come on. Hold control and then I can deselect those ones. There we go. Okay. Oops. All right. So now that I've got those, you can see under my UVs where they're at. Okay, and they're kind of scattered all over, so in here it's not really going to be very easy to paint them in there. So I am going to switch back to perspective to uh, ortho. I'll switch to my uh, two view. There we go. <clears throat> and I'm going to paint. So where's my project through? Uh, right now it's set to paint through, which is fine. That's what I want. And under here, I'm going to go to, there it is, project on, selected only. So this is only going to paint on the items I have selected, which is those fins. Okay. We're still going to paint through, so it goes all the way through the item. I've turned off my edge mask, because I don't need that right now. And then I can just kind of zoom back and adjust the sizing of all this stuff. Okay. I'm trying to get this fin to fit that side of the fin. Okay, so now as I paint, it's painting straight through onto there. And I can just scoot this over a little bit and paint that. The biggest thing is you don't want it to just stick out like a sore thumb. All right, so now as I spin around, you can see that I have those fins painted. Okay, cool. All right. So now I can go back to my regular brush. Now let's say I go to my layers and I'm not happy with the red here. I want this to be more of an orange or I want these yellows to be more of an orange. I can make a new layer here. <clears throat> For my colors, um, I could pick an orange. Say something like that. Back to my layers, make sure I'm on layer here, which I'll just double click and rename orange. And on my brush, I can just kind of hit this. Oops, I have to deselect. So I'm going to go to my selection, click off. There we go. Go back to my projection, say paint on all. There we go. And now on my brush, you can see how it's painting this stuff in orange. 
There we go. Now, obviously, that's too orange. So I'm going to hit Alt. I can turn this on and off, just like we could in Photoshop. And I can also play with my opacity of it. Okay, so I can give it just a little bit of an adjustment. I can also play with the mode. Um, you'll see there's a lot more modes than in Photoshop. So I can make this, you know, change it to hue, or change it to luminance, or change it to color. Okay, and you can see how I can get different effects with um, just doing that. And then if I'm looking at that, I see the before, I see the after. The after definitely looks like there's a lot more orange inside here. So I'm actually going to paint a little bit more orange there, a little bit more orange there, and you can see how now this is blending pretty nicely um, into our fish. Now, is it the exact color? No, but it does match pretty good. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. There we go. All right. So that's pretty good. Now, on his mouth, I'm not happy that the mouth came out with this um, opening here, okay, where it's basically, it's, uh, his mouth is open, but my fish mouth was mottled closed. Um, so what I can do is I'm going to paint a new layer. I'm just going to call this mouth transparency, okay? And uh, let me go to 2. There we go. Oh, I want to fix that too. Uh, I'm not liking this highlight back here, so I'm going to go back to my base for a second. Okay, it's thinking, it's thinking. Uh, there is a, um, there is a clone stamp, okay? And the way that the clone stamp works is that we hold down control and we click. Come on. And then we're picking from a source and then we just start painting, just like you would inside Photoshop. Okay, so we can still airbrush out stuff inside of here to get rid of highlights or whatever. Okay, now that is probably a horrible job I just did because it's a little bit too detailed for that area. This is very grainy and that's very like that. So I'm going to hold control, click, and then I can paint over that. There we go. Okay, so again, I can control click here, paint over this area, and blend it in a bit nicer. All right, that's good. Oops, still a little highlight on the black, so I'll hold control, click here. It's kind of hard because you see both areas. So just gotta get used to which one you're actually moving. There we go. All right, good, good, good. Now it's just going slower because I have just more stuff going on in my scene now. Um, switch back to the regular brush. Okay, so I'm going to go back to mouth transparency. And I'm basically going to paint the entire fish uh, uh, white. Okay, so here's how we can do that, is I can go to here. Uh, and just go with my color. Go with my foreground. Change that to white. And just make a big brush and just go. Obviously, you want to make sure you're on the right layer because otherwise, all that work you just did is gone. Okay? So, I'm on a different layer, it'll just save it to that one layer and not the entire thing. Okay, so now if I go back to my ortho, you can see my fish is perfectly white. So, what I need to do now is I'm going to turn off the white. Okay, make another new layer. Call this mouth trans 2. And then I'm gonna paint black where I have that uh, opening. So I can go back to my UVs. In UVs I can see perfectly where it's at and just paint it right here. So I'm gonna swap my foreground and background. Switch my brush size. Zoom in. I'm just painting this black right where that white is. Okay, I can also do this in Photoshop after I'm done. Because I can bring all these textures into Photoshop and just create the mask there. And that's acceptable also. 
I'm just showing you how to do it inside of here as well. I basically need a black and white mask to say where the mouth is and where the mouth isn't. You could also use this for fins. If you have a lot of pointy pins, um, and you want to not have to model all the pointy pins, you can do all the pointy pin stuff inside of here as far as transparency goes. Okay. We'll come down to this. And a tablet really helps in this case. I'm using um, a trackball, which is a bit different. When you're painting, it's a lot more difficult to paint stuff with a trackball. All right. That should be good. So now if I come back to my ortho, you can see that his mouth is black. Okay. Um, let's go to painting, or sorry, layers. All right. <clears throat> so if we look at these two, we should have a completely white one with a black on top of it. Yep, and that's what we have there. Okay. So now I'm ready to kind of export my stuff out. So I'm going to save my stuff. Uh, I'm going to just control S to save it. I'm going to go to my channels. And I'm going to right click on my color and say export flattened, export current channel flattened. And so that's going to export all my stuff out. Once it comes up, there it goes. And it should put it into my source images. Um, where is my desktop? Windows D drive, Clarkona, 2540, work. Oops. Fish. Fix images. Okay. And this is going to name it color, which is the channel, dot 1001.tiff. Um, I'm going to get rid of this because we only have one texture here. And I'm just going to put an underscore and then say uh, trans because my transparency. So this is a, um, a uh, variable that uses whatever the name is. So our layer name is color, so it's automatically going to call it color. And then I put the underscore trans, so it'll put underscore trans. Okay, so export all patches. We only have one patch. There we go. So I'm going to turn these two off now. It's going to do its thinking. I'm going to right click, say export flattened current channel. It's going to pop up again. Now it says being color trans, I'm just going to erase that, just put color. And obviously you could call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm calling mine. And it saves it as a TIFF, so that's a good um, file, si file type to have. And now the geometry from that doesn't matter because all we're doing is getting flattened out textures. So now I'm in Maya, I can apply those flattened out textures to this guy. So I'm going to assign a new material. And if this was a skin um, or something like a softer one, like maybe a uh, blowfish or something, uh, we could go with like a, a MISS because there might be a little bit of subsurface. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to stick with just a flat Mia. Okay, and it says the Mia was not assigned. Let's see why not. Because I didn't have anything selected, that's why. So let me assign that Mia. There we go. And this is going extremely slow. Um, I can close Mari down at this point. Uh, and yes, of course, save my stuff. I open that in accident. There we go. Okay. So now in my color inside here, I'm just going to map my color, just the flattened out color version. So go to file, 
we wait, we wait, there we go, click the folder, here's my color, just color, okay, and it's orange, and it's all the fish stuff, there it is, perfect, and there we go, so now we get this color of the fish, and we can spin around, I can click on it, hit three, okay, now we see that we still have the white for the mouth here, so I'm going to, uh, just a couple things, obviously you want to take the reflectivity down, and the glossiness down a bit, set that to one. Now way down here at the bottom, there's a advanced, and under the cutout opacity, I'm going to click on that, go to file, go to the folder, go to my color trans, and this I'm going to come down to um, effects, nope, color balance, there it is and say alpha is luminance. So that means that my alpha channel is my brightness. So now we're not really seeing anything happen here. Um, let's go to a side view. And I'll render this out. And what we should see is that the fish mouth is then open. Okay, and I'll turn my alpha channel on so we can see it. And no, we're not seeing that at all, okay? Now sometimes what will help too is if you take your texture and just put it onto a plane. And it might sound weird, but it does um, kind of help you visualize what the texture is looking like and where areas are working. Okay, so there's our texture, so there's definitely no transparency um, in this thing at all. So cutout opacity is there. It should be working. It should be cutting it out. Uh, I am going to turn my filter types off for that one and for this one. And then we'll see if one doesn't be. All right, let's do this. It's not reading it correctly, and sometimes it just won't. Uh, bug in my or whatever. I'm going to open up both of these images here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as my alpha channel inside of that. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this. So I control A, control C. I'm going to go in here to channels, make a new channel, and paste that in there and then save it. Okay, so now if we come in here and instead of this being color trans, I just go to color and turn off alpha's luminance. What we should get is we should get transparency on this item. Okay, and now we're getting it. You can see there's a hole here and a hole there. Okay, so before it just wasn't reading it that way. Doing it a different way, it reads it. So now if we look, the fish has a little hole opening in his mouth. Okay, it's not going to be a huge, like, in this case, a huge thing. But if you had the fins, you'd definitely see, like, the little jaggedies of the fins. Okay. So that's working perfectly. Um, the next thing I want to do is go to my uh, move stuff around all the time, hypershade. And I want to take the same color and drop it onto my bump map. Okay, so I click my Mia, which I'm going to relabel fish texture. Okay. Uh, I don't need to have two colors coming in here. Um, this one here is the original one. This one here is the one I did for cutout. So I'm just going to delete this cutout one. Because I want to use just this one image for all of it. Okay. That way in case I change something, I don't have to go and reload a bunch of stuff. So under the advanced, here is cutout opacity. I can just middle mouse button, drag that to cutout opacity. Okay. Same effect no difference all right and then um for bump map bump middle drag this onto standard bump 
Now in this case it's taking the alpha channel and that's where it's getting the bump value from. Um, so what that means is if we were to render this we probably wouldn't see a huge difference. Let me take my test resolution back to render settings and render this out. We are seeing some difference there. Okay, it might just be a little bit too strong. So let's take our bump depth down to maybe 0.05. There we go. So now we have some sort of bump happening on here. Uh, his mouth does look like he has buck teeth all of a sudden. So let's analyze that and see why that's working like that. I'm going to switch my renderer to default legacy. And again, sometimes it takes just kind of reconnecting things in order for it to work out. I'm also getting like a double eye, which is weird. All right, let's take a look and see. Do I have two here? Just the one. Fish texture. I think my cutout opacity is a little bit too much. Alright. Windows. Hyper shade. So my cutout opacity is actually making it uh, full on transparent, and it shouldn't be doing that. In a perfect world, we wouldn't have these kinds of issues, but we just are dealing with Maya, so we're going to have issues. Oh, you know what? I didn't reload my color image from here, so let's reload this. Alright, so now, let's see if we still get that same look. We're still getting the double fish. All right. I guess in this case, it's going to work out better. It's not a huge deal that it's doing that, but you know, just annoying, I guess. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the cutout opacity. And reconnect that same color tiff. There we go. So now it's cut out. Now we have this. Now that doesn't make sense why it would do that because it's the same file. But it is what it is. All right. So there we go. All right. Now it is kind of showing. Uh, it's not kind of. It is showing in black. I'm going to save my fish. Go to viewport. It's still in black because we've kind of. Um, we have the bump map on there. We have the color map on there. And some things are just too big for it to display. So it's displaying it in black. Um, if you want to see it uh, as you're animating, sometimes I'll make a very simplified version. So just a Lambert. And drop the fish texture on there. And now I have one that I can play with and kind of walk around. And look at that, the Lambert cut it out perfectly. So you read the transparency and it attached it the same way that it should have. Whatever. Um, so now everything else we do to this, we'll see it, and then just at render time, we can swap it back to the actual fish texture. Okay, so Lambert 2 is going to be my temp fish texture. Okay, and this is one I could use to animate, uh, you know, in the scene I'm working with. It makes it a lot quicker. Um, it's not trying to calculate bump or any of that stuff. At render time, I would swap to the other one because it just has more... Uh, bells and whistles that we could adjust. Okay. So it looks pretty good for our, you know, really quick texturing. Now we did kind of, you know, this is maybe a little bit sloppy here. So we could always go back and adjust that. Um, and if we have those pieces, okay, here they are in the UV texture editor. There's that stripe and that stripe. And then this, I believe, is just probably one of the ends. Oh, what's that? Okay. Um, so we could actually go in there and repaint some of this. Go back in tomorrow and repaint it, re-export the stuff out, and then we would, you know, have that obviously updated. Um, 
and I'll probably do that at a later point, but right now I think we're good. Okay, we have the workflow, we can go back and forth between Mari and Maya, and continuously tweak things. And it's literally just going into Mari, painting stuff, and then re-exporting that out. Uh, I also have a stripe here that I'm just noticing um, is not lined up here or there. So again, stuff that I'd want to adjust. This is a little bit of white here and here, so I want to adjust that. Okay. Uh, the more time you spend doing these kinds of things, obviously the better your fish is going to look. Um, some of these items, I'm going to turn my image back on here, can be adjusted inside of the uh, Photoshop file. So if I go into this, um, where's the tail right there? If I go into the tail, you can see there's a little bit of white creeping in here. So let me open up that color. There it is. And the tail is right there. You can see the white creeping in. Yeah, switch gears into which program I'm in. You so you see how I just airbrush that in. Now the brush, the button I was looking for. And here's the other tail. Okay, I think just airbrushing this in. It's just where we have the seams uh, or where the edges were that was just a little bit soft so Getting rid of that white <clears throat> will obviously help that out Here's where that bad fin is I'm just going to copy it from here paste it there And then I can knock the opacity down and just like the previous assignment, we can actually bring the UVs also in, where we can get an exact alignment of where the stuff is at. Actually, we're pretty scattered. Yeah, we could adjust that more, whatever. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but there we go. So we just save it. Uh, we don't need layers. Uh, discard my layers. <clears throat> we do have an alpha channel in there. And then we'll just reload <clears throat> this texture. And now those white spots are now gone. Okay. So it's very quick back and forth, back and forth that we can do. Just a matter of knowing those tools. Okay. Now, because this is transparent, if you looked directly into the fish's mouth, um, you would see inside the fish's stomach. Okay, so it's obviously it's not a perfect solution, um, but from where we're going to be, kind of back here like this, it'll work. Okay, just we be careful of our camera angles that we don't again go right into the fish's mouth. All right, so that's how we can build our texture, and then the next step of this is going to be rigging the fish and then animating the fish.